Hi everyone, this is Dana Lewis, creator of OpenAPS, here at the Fall 2021 Diabetes Mind D-Data Exchange to share with you the exciting history of the We Are Not Waiting movement. It's a short history, but packed with incredible milestones in diabetes. Looking back in the first 100 years after the introduction of insulin in 1920, it feels like time almost stood still and not much progress was being made. It wasn't until 1970 when home blood glucose meters first became available. The first insulin pin appeared in the 1980s. And in the 1990s, the first insulin pump was used at home. And continuous glucose monitoring appeared on the scene in the 2000s. Then things really began to change. Over the past decade, we began to see the emergence of automated insulin delivery systems, connecting insulin pumps to CGM devices with smart algorithms. And beyond that, we have had an explosion of innovation that outpaces most of the first century of diabetes innovation in our most recent decade. For example, in 2011, the first Diabetes Mind Innovation Summit was held, one of the first gatherings to bring together patient innovators, commercial companies, clinicians, regulators, and designers all in the same room. In the spring of 2013, John Kostick worked to pull CGM data off of his son's physical CGM receiver in order to remotely monitor his son, newly diagnosed with type 1 diabetes, when he went to kindergarten. Little did John know what a milestone this would turn out to be. Later that year, myself and Scott Librand asked for John's code for real-time CGM data access. We used this code to create an open loop system with a smart, louder alarm we called DIYPS, which was a precursor to the open source closed loop systems we see today. 2013 was packed full of activity, including that in November 2013, the very first D-Data Exchange event was hosted. It was there that Lane Desbro coined the term and hashtag, we are not waiting. And also in 2013, Lane worked to pair his glanceable displays with John's code and worked with Ross Naylor and Kevin Lee, among others, to create what is now known as Night Scout, an open source remote monitoring platform for diabetes data. This project picked up additional collaborators through Twitter, such as Jason Calabrese, Jason Adams, and more in early 2014. And there was still so much more to come. In 2014, at the summer D-Data event, Emma Black demonstrated their work on XDRIP, new technology to receive CGM data from a transmitter to inexpensive hardware and an Android app which works as a data hub and processor between many different devices. At the same D-Data event, Ben West demonstrated his work to capture an understanding of his insulin pump's communications, both in the ability to read and write commands to the insulin pump. In fall 2014 at the next D-Data event, Scott and I presented DIYPS, and we announced our plans to close the loop. Because of the relationships fostered through these gatherings, we were able to work together with Ben and bridge radio communications with my insulin pump, pull data in real time from my CGM, and use the existing algorithm from DIYPS to drive adjustments to my insulin delivery. At D-Data, we had predicted closing the loop the following year, but two weeks after announcing our plans, we had successfully closed the loop. In early 2015, we then posted the plain language reference design for OpenAPS, leading the way with the world's first open source closed loop system. In 2015, additional innovations around Night Scout continued to develop. This included Kate Farnsworth developing a glanceable pebble watch face, which others like Christine Deltrap took and ran with, making accessible to the broader community and initiating additional innovation in displays of diabetes data. Meanwhile, Pete Schwamm had been working on radio frequency protocols to translate pump communications and Bluetooth signals for phones. He shared his design of the Riley Link in spring 2015. And after seeing Pete's vision, Nate Ratcliffe took on the idea as an open APS user and was inspired to develop what's now known as Loop in spring 2016, which became another open source DIY closed loop system using an iPhone interface. Similarly, in mid-2016, Milos Kozak and others faced challenges in finding loopable pumps in various other countries. Milos ported the OpenAPS algorithm and worked with Scott and I to create the objective-based learning system within an Android app. Milos shared Android APS openly, which became the third open-source closed-loop system, 
which uses an Android phone as the interface. Another notable event in the action-packed year of 2016 was a presentation made at a Quantified Self public health meeting, where several OpenAPS users were able to join me on stage for a surprise panel. The audience of healthcare researchers, designers, and clinicians were flabbergasted and in awe of the stories they heard directly from community members about the impact of We Are Not Waiting in diabetes. All of these We Are Not Waiting milestones have helped raise the tide, which has raised more boats, so to speak. In 2017, JDRF announced their push for the Open Protocol Initiative. This expressed a vision for the future of commercially interoperable devices, for patients to be able to choose the pump, CGM, and algorithm of choice for AID systems. It was also in 2017 that the informal Google Doc of loop build instructions was ported to GitHub and KDD Simone provided structure and improvements to the documentation, improving accessibility and understanding of the build process for many community members. In 2018, the FDA announced a digital software pre-certification program to help streamline regulation of software-based medical devices. Howard Look gave a presentation at DData that was a master class on understanding what FDA regulations do and don't say and inspired countless innovators, some of whom were considering taking various open source solutions to regulatory bodies globally. By 2019, not only had the diabetes community brought more than three open source AID systems to the world, now used by thousands globally, but there were also now multiple commercial AID systems. The D-Data Exchange that year hosted the first AID showcase with six of the commercial players showing their systems and people with diabetes presenting about their experiences with the technology. Additionally, in 2019, the first ever randomized control clinical trial to specifically assess open source AID was awarded funding. This is the CREATE trial. And in 2020, an observational study was also funded to analyze data from another open source system, this time using real world evidence for the basis of study. Earlier this year in 2021, Katarina Braun presented at DData from the Open Project looking back at the plethora of studies analyzing open source AID and showcasing some of the results from the groundbreaking Collaborative Open Project, which is a patient-led multidisciplinary global research project. Open is playing a role in helping translate experience-based evidence from the patient community to academia and industry. It's been a decade packed with innovation, and this is just the tip of the iceberg of the innovations that have happened throughout the years. The milestones I have presented so far are high-level milestones, but there are dozens, if not hundreds, of other innovations that have happened along the way. For example, Scott Hanselman is a well-known and longtime innovator and commentator on diabetes technology. He wrote the first glucose management system for the Palm Pilot in 1998. More recently, he led efforts to understand a new commercial API to make it possible for individuals to securely log in and access their own real-time CGM data and share it with platforms of choice, such as Night Scout. He's also had countless other innovations, such as engineering methods of showing blood glucose levels in terminal windows. Anna McAllister is another longtime diabetes advocate. She presented at the Diabetes Mind event in 2012, calling for interoperability in diabetes devices. What year is this, she asked, expressing widespread frustration with the lack of interoperability and lack of APIs, and she debunked some of the commonly cited excuses used at the time some of which we still hear today. Another repeat innovator is Mark Wilson. Mark was an early contributor to multiple open source AID systems and notably created a highly customizable Pebble watch face usable by any DIY AID user of any system type for visualizing AID data. I still use his watch face de design today. He also created the OSX menu bar tool to show blood glucose data on Mac computers in the menu bar. Repeat innovators also include Melissa and Kevin Lee. Melissa was the first person living with diabetes who chose to remotely share CGM data with a spouse using a custom remote monitoring system that she and Kevin engineered together. They've also experimented with data visualizations and tools like Google Glass. Kevin also played a pivotal role in the initial Android-based Night Scout uploader app, which enabled thousands of people to upload CGM data to the cloud. And of course, the longtime innovator Ben West has contributed countless innovations to the community as well. He began reverse engineering pump communications years before there was a dream of DIY and then open source closed loops. He has contributed to OpenAPS, Night Scout, and many of the other pivotal open source diabetes projects that the community takes for granted today. When we talk about DIY and diabetes, 
many people think that the source of these innovations was technology-based tinkering for the sake of tinkering. But it was much more deliberate than that. It was a collective effort to improve the lives of people living with diabetes, whose needs were not sufficiently being met by industry, even though the technology to make change existed. Mark Wilson explained it well in his 2016 D-Data presentation, talking about his experience with OpenAPS and Night Scout, and explaining why he, among so many others, chooses to DIY. Diabetes is already DIY. From day one, when you get a prescription for a meter and some insulin, it's up to you how you're going to put these pieces together to build your own way of doing diabetes. Your own way of driving the car. Which brings me back to the car. If you're driving this car, you'd like to improve it in some small way, but you're going to have to hotwire it to do so. So what do you do? Do you worry about the car and how uncomfortable it feels to mess with it? Or do you focus on how much changing the car would transform your drive? Of course you hotwire the car, because it's not about the car. It's about the drive. There's this misconception. Those of us doing this DIY thing are the car fanatics. We just love our fancy rooms. Most people are happy with the car they have, but we, we just got tinkered. It's not like that. We were sentenced to this drive. We don't want to be on it. We were given a car, clearly designed by someone who's never spent time behind the wheel. We happen to know how to open the car, so we do. And it makes our drive so much better that we must share it with others. Because it was never about the car, it's about the drive. Over the past decade, the community has worked hard to pay it forward, a popular mantra alongside We Are Not Waiting. One strategy the community has embraced is talking to mainstream media and sharing individual stories that highlight this collective narrative of innovation, problem solving, and the need to improve the lives of people with diabetes using available technology. Stories throughout the years have appeared on mainstream media platforms, such as Popular Science, The New York Times, The Wall Street Journal, Wired, Oprah Magazine, and more. And patient-driven innovation has also become a part of mainstream scientific medical literature. Since the first invited publication we wrote for JDST in 2016, covering a survey of the first few dozen OpenAPS users, there has now been scientific articles referencing DIY diabetes technology and publications like JAMA, Nature, The Lancet, Clinical Diabetes, and more. Patient-written articles are not a one-off in diabetes. Numerous articles have been published, including a recent one that illustrates the risk conversation that many people with diabetes want to be having when assessing new diabetes technology, such as automated insulin delivery, rather than ignoring the risk of manual insulin dosing. Quality of life must be taken into consideration, and it's the patient voice on social media, in conferences, in the medical literature, and beyond that has helped make this a reality. Thankfully, the patient voices are strong in the diabetes community. Users of open source AID have been saying for years what the impact of this technology has been. For example, one person commented that the first night with an open source AID resulted in the most solid night of sleep in 20 plus years. She said, I literally felt like a new person. I didn't even remember what it felt like because it had been so long. Another person described the impact of open source AID, which she started using after the birth of her newborn baby. Translated to English, she points out that even with a newborn baby, she sleeps better with her open source hybrid closed loop system than she has ever done since her diagnosis of diabetes. That says a lot. This last decade has been peppered with progress, inspired by people like you, me, and many others who have said we are not waiting. Part of this has been because of events such as D-Data Exchange. D-Data has brought together patients and carers. It has brought together healthcare providers, and it has also brought together industry, advocacy, and regulators. The Diabetes Mine Innovation Events and D-Data Exchanges have led to hirings, collaborations, pilot projects, and real change in the industry and regulatory worlds for diabetes tools. It's clear to me from reviewing the past decade and more in diabetes innovation that where the community of people with diabetes lead, industry and others will follow. There are many stories you have heard today from the diabetes community with many more stories out there. Each of these represents hundreds if not thousands, of people who have chosen to say, we are not waiting. Thank you to each and every person who has ever said, we are not waiting, to make life with diabetes better for all of us.